Uh, let's move on to the next segment. Now we're talking about since we're discussing numbers and the polls and that's the talk of the town. I'm going to take you through a series of these figures that have been presented by a number of these poll agencies that have come out and these num these figures keep changing, you know, uh, one week after another and we've gotten the latest figures and, and uh, taking a look at uh, you know, the popularity, the approval ratings for Trump and Kamala Harris. Now, this is uh, uh, on 21st of October. And, and Trump uh, has a 46.4% approval rating, while Kamala Harris uh, has an edge of 48.2%. So, a little less than two points is where Kamala Harris leads. Now, that was uh, uh, 538 uh, is the source. That's the survey that was brought out by 538 ABC News. The second survey done by Washington Post Shar School gives Trump at puts Trump at 47 percent, Harris at 50 percent. So that's a three point lead for Kamala Harris. Let's take a look at uh, oh, one more of these poll surveys that have been put out. This is Emerson, The Hill. This survey again on the 21st of October, the figures stood for Trump at 49 percent and Harris too at the same level, 49 percent. So that's interesting. Let's take a look at uh, another poll survey, Quinnipiac, where Trump stands at 48 percent and Harris at 46 percent. So one of the fewer polls that uh, projects Trump to be ahead of Kamala Harris by two points. And take a look at these figures. And here you look from 20, I'm going to just give you a perspective because on the 21st of July, we saw that the popularity ratings for Donald Trump was at 45.3%. Kamala Harris was just a point shy at 44.2%. Now this has uh, uh, dramatically increased for Kamala Harris. Fourth of August is 47%, while Donald Trump goes down to as uh, less as uh, four points at 44.5%. And, 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 and uh, Kamala Harris, if you take a look at this graph, has steadily improved her ratings up until 21st of October. Uh, uh, Donald Trump, again, uh, varying some t somewhere between 44% to about 46%. And this, I will have to obviously put in this uh, information that the source, it's 538 ABC News is what, this is their survey and this is how they project things have gone around. Let's take a look at the, at the swing states and how uh, the two candidates seem to be faring as per uh, 538. And you have Kamala Harris 46.7% and Trump at 48.6%. So this is an edge in Arizona that Trump seems to have as per the poll projection. Uh, let's take a look at the next battleground state, which includes Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina. So here you take a look at Georgia and Trump is at 48.6%, Harris at 47%. So again, an edge that has been given to Trump by the ABC News 538 survey. Next up, Michigan, yet another battleground state, 47.3% for Trump. And uh, Kamala Harris is just marginally ahead of him at 47.4%. So it's, 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 a, it's a very tiny, small difference between the popularity ratings if these projections are to go by. Let's take a look at the fifth uh, swing state, the toss-up state, 47.4% for Trump in Nevada and 47.1% for Kamala Harris. Once again, the edge in favor of uh, Donald Trump in Nevada. Let's take a look at uh, the other swing states as well. There's North Carolina, you know, there was uh, uh, um, you know, Hurricane uh, Helen that had hit and these this region was devastated and both these leaders had campaigned aggressively over there visiting the site. Donald Trump has uh, a lead of 48.1 percent, uh, Harris at 47.3 percent and uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, Pennsylvania, a very important battleground state for both these leaders. They have been campaigning over there time and again visiting this this particular state uh, repeatedly. Trump at 47.4%. Kamala Harris is a slight edge of 47.8%. Uh, so 0.4% is uh, the, uh, the, the increase in the popularity chart. So the approval ratings for Kamala Harris in Pennsylvania. Let's take a look now at uh, Wisconsin. Yes, Trump at 47.8%. Kamala Harris slightly below Trump at 47.6%. So those, those are numbers for you. These are the seven battleground states. Let's now take a look at how the margin of lead uh, 
happens for Harris and for Trump. So if you take a look at these seven states, the battleground states, you take a look at four of these states have Trump that is on the lead, in the lead, which is Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. Meanwhile, for Harris, she has gained leads of little of one of, of one percent or little less than one percent, which is Michigan, Nevada, and Wisconsin. Now, taking a look, of course, at the projections, the, the electoral votes projections that have also come up. And, and, and this is, again, the source. Uh, this is uh, the survey that was conducted by 538. And uh, here's uh, the halfway mark to 70. Donald Trump, it projects, it's projected that Donald Trump is uh, going to get to those 219 of those electoral votes. Kamala Harris, right, right now, currently, if the projection is to be uh, taken into consideration, 226 of those votes and again uh, if you see this division solid democrats are 175 so states there is uh, democratic leaning states which is 51 uh, then the solid republican states are 188 and republican leaning states are 31 the toss-ups are those 93 uh, votes okay all right uh, now here's a look like i said you know the division that has been shown harris at 226 she needs just about 44 of those seats to cross the 270 mark trump 29 219 needs 51 of those votes to cross the 270 mark and here's a look at this uh, uh, map you know the the bold red is of course the republicans solid republicans you see the blues that's new york and, and, and a number of these, California, Washington, they are all blue states, which means Democrat states. And of course, you have the toss-ups, which, uh, uh, which is Pennsylvania, which is North Carolina, Georgia, uh, and you see the others. Let's take a look at the states that are reflective of how Trump, if he's going to get those 188 electoral votes, which are the states that he's going to be getting those votes out of. So these, these are traditional uh, uh, red voters. These are traditional Republican voters. So here you have a look at Nevada, Texas, Arizona, uh, Ohio, uh, uh, Kentucky. So, so these, the, the, this reflects Trump's uh, you know, uh, stand uh, Trump's gain that he at this point of time, or any Republican for that matter, he's fighting the election. These are the states that have traditionally voted for Republicans and therefore for Trump as well. So let's take a look at uh, uh, you know these these other states. This is the, the, the these are the two states which are leaning towards the Republicans. So likelihood of Trump gaining these two states, that is Florida, is is then going to be. Uh, more more of a possibility let's take a look at uh, the solid democratic states uh, which favor Kamala Harris which includes uh, uh, New York as well like I said California and Washington and these have strong electoral votes which is California at 54 Washington 12 New York at 28 so that make a huge chunk and and along with the others that brings the total 175 taking a look at uh, uh, the uh, uh, democratic leaning states and, and this brings the total of uh, electoral votes in favor of Kamala Harris if these states then vote for uh, uh, the Democrats turns into 51. So, uh, and finally, we, I think we have the toss-up states as well, which is uh, the swing states, the battlegrounds that are then finally going to decide who wins. So now this is important because you see Nevada, six of those electoral votes, Arizona at 11, Georgia 16, North Carolina 16, and then you have Pennsylvania 19, Michigan 15, and Wisconsin 10. So these are the number of uh, the states with electoral votes, as many as 93 of them, that will play the decider as to who ends up winning the election.